do not let them touch your lymph nodes. A presentation by Professor Gershom Zajcek, Faculty of Medicine, Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Introduction. Surgeons have a morbid urge to manipulate your lymph nodes, which is dangerous and should be avoided by all means. They are driven by false views about the nature of cancer and claim that lymph node drain tumor cells from organs and filter them and therefore their removal prevents metastasis. And they claim also that lymph node examination is essential for the assessment of your prognosis. Now listen to why these statements are false. Following a virus infection of an organ, some stem cells are transformed and become neoplastic. I describe it in another presentation, virus-induced cancer in the cancer field. Stem cell continually divides and its progeny differentiate into a tumor. Initially, tumor is too small to be detected. When attaining a size of about 5 mm, cancer is diagnosed. It may take several years from tumor formation to diagnosis. During this preclinical phase, tumor cells continually divide. Nevertheless, tumor grows very slowly since most of its cells die. So here you have a scheme, how a stem cell divides. You, you have a T0 and T1. So T0 you have one stem cell which divides asymmetrically. With, what does it mean? That the one progeny replaces the parent cell and remains stem cell and the other progeny differentiates into an end cell which is short-lived and dies by apoptosis. I described it in the presentation Streaming Tissues. When the end cell dies, it is engulfed and digested by its living neighbors. Its remnants are excreted into the extracellular fluid and distributed all over the body. Actually, at this initial stage, tumor DNA flows around, yet its amount is too small to be detected by the current means. Tumor is localized, yet its remnants are systemic. As tumor grows, it produces more and more dying end cells. Their neighbor failed to engulf them all, and the rest is carried away through the local capillaries into lymph nodes or directly into the vascular system. These dead cells are known as circulating tumor cells, or CTC. They are eliminated by the reticular endothelial system, RES. As virus infection proceeds, some tumor cells divide symmetrically into stem cell progeny. So here you have what I mean, you have a T0, you have one stem cell which divides symmetrically into two stem cells. And then each has its progeny, which are end cells, which die ultimately by apoptosis. And I only draw here, but these stem cells will also have the same kind of progeny. Some stem cells and their end cells progeny enter the vascular system and lodge in remote sites. Only stem cells establish metastasis. So the end cells do not establish metastasis because they die. And 
and they are short-lived, only stem cells create metastasis. Tumors are formed in a virus-infected field, which I described virus-induced cancer and the cancer field. Their end cells are the product of the entire cancer field, which is distributed all over the infected organ. We may thus distinguish between the following preclinical cancer stages. Molecular stage, when DNA fragment enters the blood, and cellular stage, which is called the CTC stage, and micrometastatic stage, all this occurs preclinically. So from its very beginning, cancer is a systemic disease. Tumor products have a metabolic repercussion on the entire organism. <clears throat> Tumor is currently the red herring of medicine. It is the most prominent manifestation of cancer, yet cancer is more than just a tumor. It is an interaction between the organism and tumor. Also the organism contributes to the cancer. From its very beginning it is a systemic disease, which I described in the presentation cancer metastasis do not kill. For two centuries this red herring has been dominating medical thought. According to the current dogma, cancer starts during a local event, a cell transformation initiated by a gene mutation. Tumor proceeds through the following stages, localized, regional, then you have a lymphatic spread and hematogenous spread. But this is false since from the very beginning the tumor is already systemic, as I described in the preclinical stage. So, again, this view is false and has to be replaced since cancer starts as a field and from its very beginning it is systemic. During its preclinical phase it may regress, yet once diagnosed it is generally an incurable chronic disease which I describe in several presentations like breast cancer dormancy and tumor growth. Nevertheless, this rotten dogma spread the false notion about the role of lymph nodes in cancer, which I mentioned before, that lymph nodes catch can cancer cells and filter them and therefore have to be removed, otherwise you get metastasis, and that lymph nodes are necessary for determining your prognosis. The first statement is false that by the time tumor cells are found in lymph nodes, their sister stem cells float through the vascular system and you have already micrometastasis and therefore the removal of lymph nodes will not prevent metastasis. And what about the second reason? that you need lymph node examination to determine the prognosis. Current histochemical stains <clears throat> are crude and do not stain all tumor cells in the lymph node. Even a clean lymph node is not so clean since it contains unstained and invisible tumor cells. So don't let them fiddle with your health and with your lymph nodes. A recent review described the byproduct of axillary lymph node dissection. You have many side effects and the greatest is arm edema in breast cancer patients. They 
quote Kissing, who reported that lymphedema measured by lymph volume was present in 25% of the members of a cohort of 200 patients after a variety of surgical treatments for breast cancer overall and 38% of patients receiving axillary node dissection plus radiation therapy. So this treatment induces a treatment disease which is manifested by arm edema. The authors mention various ways to prevent the nuisance, none of which they say was tested scientifically. But you do not need any scientific evidence. Simply don't touch the lymph nodes. They describe arm edema treatment. Some lymphedema treatments include elevation, massage, exercise, application of external pressure with compression garments or compression pumps, and complex physical therapy. Less common therapies for lymphedema include surgical procedures and electrically stimulated lymphatic drainage. Actually, this and similar recommendation drove me to write this presentation. Never apply external pressure to the swollen arm. Let me explain why. Here you have a scheme <coughs> of a local tissue and uh, the fluid which enters and leaves the tissue the fluid enters through arterioles and crosses capillaries and the tissue supplies fluid through venules which collect into veins. And what is also important to note that lymph capillaries start in the tissue and they are drained in local lymph nodes. So this is a scheme of a local tissue. You have arterioles, venules, capillaries, and tissue cells. Here you have the scheme, how it goes toward the armpit. So you get the blood comes through the artery, then it crosses the tissue as I described before. Some of the fluid goes back through the lymph towards the local lymph node. Other part of the blood and fluid goes through the veins toward the heart. Now the dissection here does not I mean, let fluid cross the lymph node and the fluid accumulates in the tissue. So here you have again the scheme and you see here that the lymph is, it does not leave the tissue and accumulates in the tissue and therefore the arm swells. So here we have another scheme. The heart pumps fluid through this system. Generally, the fluid is supplied by arteries. Here you have the scheme of the system. The fluid enters the arteries. The blue is a fluid. And the fluid leaves through lymph vessels and veins. Now, when you cut through the lymph nodes in the armpit, Usually the fluid enters through the artery, leaves through the vein, but some of the fluid remains and is not drained properly. But what we have to remember that despite swelling, 
the fluid flows. The fluid flows also at this stage. And the fluid, the blood, uh, provides the tissue with oxy oxygen and nutrients. Now, when we apply pressure on the swollen arm, the fluid stops streaming and no oxygen is supplied to the tissue. Tissue cells die by necrosis and are replaced by fibrocytes or fibrosis. So with time the entire arm becomes rigid and fibrotic. So what is the correct treatment of a swollen arm? Do not apply any pressure on the arm otherwise it will become fibrotic. Muscle movement propels fluid toward the heart and distributes it among the tissues. The lymph is drained slowly into the vein with the aid of muscle movement. So the main therapy of a swollen arm is a continual exercise of all arm and forearm muscles. Occasionally raise your arm above the head and if you cannot move your swollen arm, move it with the help of the healthy arm. So the only effective treatment is continual exercise of muscles of the arm and the forearm. With time, lymph capillaries will regenerate and restore the lymph stream through the damaged area. Avoid other treatments like injections or surgery or what's written there in this publication. Conclusion. Lymph nodes are precious. Remember that surgeons who try to remove them are driven by a false dogma. Beware. That's all.